All right, let's be honest. If we're talking about the lenses that we use for our landscape photography, we're probably thinking of wide focal lengths, right? If you're using zooms, maybe you're using something like a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Uh, if you're into primes like I am, maybe it's a Zeiss 18 millimeter bodice lens. Point is that we're going wide and I'd like to challenge you on that and share with you what my most underrated landscape photography lenses and why it's probably not the one you're thinking of. What's going on everyone? It's Brian Matias. I want to welcome you to this video. And before we dive in, I'd love to ask for you to make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon, just to make sure that you know when new videos and live shows drop. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with using wide lenses. I use wide lenses all the time, but something happened over the past few years, well, before the uh, coronavirus happened, when we were able to go shooting more regularly, I found myself kind of plateauing with wide angle lenses. Now I love wide lenses, I've used them all the time, but there was something where I was being, I felt like I was being held back and I went into my uh, lens cabinet and I found a lens that had been sitting there admittedly for far too long. It's a lens that I never thought I would actually enjoy. Uh, and it's uh, it's this guy right here. It's another bodice lens. It's the 135 millimeter F 2.8. And 135 millimeters is a very long focal length. It's not one I think that you typically associate with landscape photography. Maybe, you know, if you're talking about getting something far in the distance, like a mountain landscape, that kind of thing, you're going to use longer focal lengths. Maybe with a zoom lens, you're probably going to use a 70 to 200 millimeter lens or 100 to 400. Or in this case here, I use this 135 millimeter bodice. And the thing is, I'm not just using the 135 millimeter focal length to get my subjects that are far away, like a mountain or something like that. I'm actually using the 135 millimeter bodice lens to kind of recreate wide angle shots. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that in a minute, but I think it's something that, uh, you know, is worth considering. One, to kind of break yourself out of a slump or a funk. Uh, a lot of times what I would do is go into Lightroom and filter by the lenses that I've been using to see how many uh, photos I've been using with one lens over another, and it's quite clear uh, and probably unsurprising that a lot of my photos uh, were either with my bodice 18 millimeter ultra wide or the 16 to 35 millimeter zoom when I had that on. Now, before we jump into Lightroom to look at some photos that I took with the 135 millimeter bodice lens, I just wanna share a few reasons why I do love this lens in particular, speaking from a landscape photography perspective, why I think uh, you would love it too. Now, this is not a sponsored post. I wasn't paid a penny to create this video. I just love these lenses and I am a Zeiss lens ambassador. So let's jump over to the desktop over here. And the first thing is uh, weather sealing. So the, the Zeiss bodice lenses uh, on the back over here, there's uh, you can't really see it, but there is a thin blue rubber gasket. It's almost like Zeiss blue, which I think is pretty sweet. But uh, anytime you have a lens like that and you notice a rubber gasket around uh, the lens mount, that's like water and dust sealing protection, which is fantastic. It's one of those things where I've been out photographing where my lenses were completely soaked, my bodice lenses and my camera, giving credit to Sony. Didn't even think twice about it. So we're coming a long way. A lot of uh, manufacturers these days are taking these things seriously, which is great to see. So having that, again, speaking from a landscape pr photography perspective, this is my kind of scene. And uh, this is often well, maybe not having water on the front of the lens element, but having uh, water all around the outer housing, um, having protection from that is really important. The other thing that's really nice is having this little LED display uh, or an OLED display, and you can see it, it's right over here. Um, it's not on when you connect it or mount it to a camera and turn the camera on, uh, that display goes live. But the really nice thing about it is that it gives you some really helpful information like where whatever the focal distance is, but it also gives you kind of a depth of field, which you could see over here, a depth of field scale. So that's, that really helps a lot. And so as you can imagine, those are two really important features for someone who does a lot of landscape and nature and outdoor photography to have. Now, as far as saying specifically, you need to use this bodice 135 millimeter lens. No, I'm not saying that at all. For me, it's just one of those lenses I never thought I would come to love with my landscape application. Usually again, I'm in a 1635 or an 18 millimeter focal length, 
So to go to the complete opposite end and use something that's so much longer of reach, uh, I never thought it, was, it would be something that I would care about or would enjoy, but I, I really loved it. And so now I want to show you some photos that I've taken with the Zeiss Bodice 135mm lens. Uh, just to start off, you would think that a photo like this one, um, obviously, you know, this is an isolated photo. It's uh, like a, a, a grass reed against some red rock in Southern Utah. This is something that you would expect to see with a longer focal length, just because you're, you're getting tight on your subject, right? And so it does a great job, nothing surprising here. It's something that if anything, one thing that I would ask you to consider is if you are using an ultra wide lens, you know, virtually all the time, whether it's the 135 or a 7, 70 to 200 millimeter lens, switch it up, go long, because it's really helpful to start looking for these little scenes here that are isolated, um, and it just changes the way you approach your scene. So we've got that here. And then again, another example uh, with uh, getting tight. Now, just to show, I mean, it does a beautiful job in terms of separating uh, foreground from background. There's a beautiful background bokeh, and color reproduction is great, so I'm really happy with that. This is something that also would be more typical with a longer focal length where uh, this was at Arches National Park. And the the thing is that I was at a distance, as you can tell, we were parked a little bit uh, further away. We were heading towards this direction, but I really liked the way the clouds were moving. So I had my 135 millimeter lens on and I put a polarizer and an ND filter to kind of put a little bit of motion to the clouds. And so that's something that you would come to expect with a longer focal length, right? You're taking photos of subjects that are far in the distance. Nothing surprising. So let's move on again. Uh, let's go back to the grid here. And then again, tighter shots, getting detail, uh, repeating patterns. This is, again, this was at Zion National Park. A longer focal length is ideal for these kinds of photos. A wider lens would not give you the same effect partly because of the lack of lens compression, but also uh, it just would, you'd have more information in the frame and it just wouldn't look as good in my opinion. I specifically put on the longer focal length because I wanted to isolate specific areas. I loved uh, the, the different directions, the striation of the rock going horizontally and vertically, and also the ribbons uh, with different colors in the rocks I thought was beautiful. And then moving on. So this is a pano here. Um, let me go to the grid view. Um, I, I'm gonna, these three are also panos, but I just want to show you a final result. This is a, a panel of about five photos that I stitched together. And if you were to look at this, you know, you could think that this was maybe a 24 millimeter lens, uh, but the, the difference is this was taken with 135 millimeter uh, focal length stitched together and you're getting this lens compression that you would not get with a 24 millimeter or a wider lens. That's one of the most important things to consider when we're talking about lo these longer focal lengths is the longer the focal length, the more lens compression you get. And what that does is it me it shows you that you have more of a realistic uh, relationship between elements. So with a wider lens, these trees would be, they would look like they were much further in the background and they would be a lot smaller. But because I simulated a wider focal length by stitching together multiple photos, I'm able to get the best of both worlds where I can give a wider perspective, but also benefit from that lens compression. So let's go to the grid view here and let's look at this photo. So this was, this is actually 11 photos. I'll show you the, the end result. So this is a pano taken at Zion uh, National Park. And I just love the composition. Again, with a wider lens, this peak would be way far in the distance and it'd be a lot smaller because of that lack of compression. But here, what I did was, I'll just walk you through. So these are straight out of camera brackets and you see kind of we're moving over, over. Not only did I go over one row, but then I went down and I did a second row and moved back. So it's 10 panels that we stitched together to create this one panel here. And it's just, I mean, it's, I love it. I think the technique is a lot of fun. It does look like a wide angle shot, but it, this peak is not way off into the distance, which I think is really important. So 
Let's move on to another example here. Again, just to show you, if this was with a wider lens, like a 24 millimeter lens, the downtown area here would be far in the distance, which might be a good thing if that's what you're going for. But I, I was able to get this wonderful lens compression and still get a wide composition. And then finally, this photo taken at sunrise looks like a wide angle shot, right? It's just one of those things where if it was with an actual wide lens in a single frame, everything would look a lot smaller. And so you can see here, just moving across, all I did was do this pano, vertical pano with 135 millimeter. And it looks like it could be, uh, it, it is a wider kind of aspect ratio, but it could be something like a 24 millimeter lens. So, you know, just going through and looking at these images, uh, to me, there's no question to, uh, as far as the benefits of using something with a longer focal length and combine it with panoramic stitching to get the best of both worlds. All right, so what do you think? Am I crazy? Do you see some potential over here? Let me know. Um, I'm actually gonna create a video soon when it's not 12 degrees outside uh, where I take my camera and my bias 135 millimeter lens and uh, align a pano shot and then we're gonna come back and stitch it together. So uh, let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments below uh, if you think that I'm crazy, if you could see yourself using a longer focal length for your landscape photos, not just one or two photos, but go out with just a longer focal length lens. It doesn't have to be a prime. It could be a 70 to 200 or 100 to 400, but I'm, I generally wanna know if that's something that you're interested in. All right, that does it for this video. If you liked it, please hit a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to get notified for all future videos and live shows. Thanks a lot, everyone.